Hello, this is John Friedel, and you're listening to Episode 7 of the Professor Slots Podcast, where my goal for the show is to guide slot machine enthusiasts to success. I appreciate your tuning in to today's episode. Show notes are available at professorslots.com slash e7. In this episode, I have two fun segments, including what happens when you've won a taxable jackpot and California slot machine casino gambling. John Friedel from the Professor Slots blog reveals all his slot machine casino gambling strategies, as well as tips and tricks for thriving in the casino environment. Choose winning slot machines and identify your gambling goals. Being entertained, earning comps, winning take-home cash, or combining them. John has won 90 taxable jackpots and a luxury car in nine months of slot play and made a profit at slots gambling since 2013. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe. Again, that's professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. In my research into slot machine casino gambling, I have learned that there is another question that is often asked. It's the second most often asked question. You may recall that the number one question was answered in last week's episode, Why Do Slot Machines Use Fruit Real Symbols? The number two most asked question is, How do slot machines pay out? Well, the immediate answer is straightforward. A slot attendant arrives quickly to collect an ID, performs a hand payout, and unlocks the machine to allow continued play. If the slot machine you're playing locks up, it's either had an internal error or you've won a taxable jackpot. Either way, a slot attendant will show up shortly to help. For goodness sake, don't walk away until you know which. But let's make sure we start at the beginning. When I found out this specific question was of such great interest, I decided this question is about the various steps of the payout process. Do you agree? I suppose it is possibly a technical question about how the electronics of a slot machine determines a win. If so, I've already discussed the two odds of winning back in episode 5 of this podcast. I suppose it's also possibly about how casinos set up their slot machine odds overall. If there are any winning patterns they might prefer in order to reach their business objectives. If so, I'll be discussing such casino operator decisions in future episodes from the perspective of the advantage plays I've seen made available after such decisions. As I've hinted at in past episodes... These winning patterns now available in modern casinos due to the tinkering of casino operators is the real difference, the real advantage, the real reason for my starting this podcast. Slot machines have special purpose computers, like a lot of equipment and tools commonly found in our lives. Specifically, these common tools include televisions, electronic watches, gas station pumps, cash registers, bank ATMs automobiles, baby monitors, and the list goes on and on. Each of these devices have one or more computer microprocessors, visual displays or audio speakers, possibly touch screens, and may even have a way to accept, dispense, or transfer currency, either physically or online. Beyond controlling the multiple interfaces to and from the player introduced to slot machine casino technology in 1994, The computer within a slot machine also controls the odds of a player winning. At its core, this odds calculation is provided by a pseudo-random number generator. This pseudo-random number generator is an element of the computer programming algorithm used by slot machines to determine the outcome of a player's bet, using the predetermined odds of winning as set by the casino operator within the limited options provided by the slot machine manufacturer. As previously mentioned, This pseudo-random number generator is actually used twice, once to determine if a jackpot is won, and then again to determine how much was won. Once a player selects a specific slot machine, that machine operates to accept or reject the inserted cash, the ticket voucher, free slot play, or the player's club reward card. Next, it accepts the player's selection for denomination amount and amount of credits to be bet, assuming more than one option is available for denomination and credits. Of course, the machine will not operate if insufficient funds have been inserted into the machine to make such a bet. When the bet is placed, 
the machine immediately selects the latest random number generated to determine the outcome of the bet and updates the player's club card with any points earned for placing the bet. Now the reels begin to turn, but only after that fraction of a second it took to determine the outcome of the bet. I should mention these steps are only for typical slot machines. Skill-based slot machines, like those found in some states, where players select which reels to spin for the second of two rounds, wait for that selection before determining the next random outcome. In any case, at the end of the sequence of events, the machine turns the reels to show the outcome of the bet. Let's walk through this typical sequence in a little more detail to make sure we understand each step taken by both the player, slot machine, and any casino personnel. From the player's point of view, they select a specific machine, insert money in the form of cash, ticket voucher, player's club card bank, or free slot play. They choose from the denominations available. They choose the number of credits to bet. Then they place the bet, either by pushing a number or pulling a lever. They observe the results of the bet, including any bonus round, and then they receive the winnings from the bet, if there are any. Then... They either leave the machine empty-handed, cash out any remaining funds and leave with a ticket voucher, or they continue playing the machine. The player may choose to insert a player card at any time before or during play, then later remove it, or not, before leaving the machine. Now let me go through the player and machine sequence of events. There's a player action and a machine response, possibly a machine response. So the player selects a slot machine. Machine has no action. Player enters a rewards card. Possibly, it's optional. The machine reads the player's card and updates the display. The player enters cash or ticket voucher. The machine either accepts the entry or not and updates its credit meter display. The player pulls funds or comps from the rewards card. This is optional again. The machine's response is to interact with the player's Reward Club program account via its network connection. The player then chooses a denomination amount, if there's more than one available, and the machine will accept that entry. Then the player chooses a number of credits to bet, and again, the machine will either accept or reject that entry and updates the display. Then the player places the bet and observes the outcome. Here, the machine response is to reduce the funds, determine the bet outcome, and then turn the reels to the outcome as design. The next player action may be to play a bonus round if that was the outcome of the bet, and the machine response is to display that bonus round sequence. Next step for the player is to receive any non-taxable winnings, and the machine response is to update the funds on the machine with the amount one, if any. Player action is to receive possibly a taxable winnings, a taxable jackpot. What's the machine response? The machine response is to lock up. It's going to wait for a hand payout. Then once the available funds have been updated with the amount one, it has to have an interaction with the slot attendant. Next player action would be for the player to remove the rewards card machine updates its display to show that that's happened. The player presses the cash out button and the machine will respond by printing a voucher uh, with the funds and the display again updates. The last action of the player is to leave and there's no response from the machine for that. And this is the sequence of actions by the player and responses by the machine for the slot machine gambling process. Between determining the outcome of the bet and turning the reels, the machine executes programming code that turns the reels in such a way that the machine's game theme designers consider the most entertaining to the player, such as using real symbols for non-wins, which are next to the symbols for sizable jackpots. Has this happened to you? Oh, that was so close. I almost won. As mentioned, the bet's outcome is determined when the reels start moving, not when they stop. Despite the entertainment value derived, or the frustration achieved, by the player when observing the action of the slot machine's operation. In the event of a win, the machine executes further programming to activate a sequence of lights and sounds, this is called a roll-up, 
while updating the information display for the player. This next section I'll call Now What? The Jackpot Payout Process. If a jackpot less than the taxable limit is one, which in many U.S. states is less than $1,200, slot players can simply proceed with jackpots that require immediate payout of taxes results in the slot machine locking up. Many, many slot players have been surprised by their slot machines locking when a taxable jackpot is won. It can only be unlocked by a casino employee, such as a slot attendant. I've sat a few seats away from slot machine gamblers whose machines have locked up and they weren't aware of that, and they were locked up due to winning a taxable jackpot. The first such situation, a professional poker player had just finished his poker tournament, he said he'd lost, and was playing a high-limit slot machine next to me. I noticed his machine locking up, but he just kept right on pushing the max bet button four or five times before stopping with a confused look on his face. A poker player with a confused look on his face? Anyway, I gently chuckled at him. He looked a bit upset. Again, a poker player not having a poker face? Anyway, he looked a bit upset, but I pointed out he had won $5,000, so surprise. The second time I saw this happen, a, a woman sat down next to me and played another high-limit slot machine. My impression was she didn't often play high-limit slots. After about five minutes or so, she won a jackpot. She noticed she'd won a jackpot, and, but she just tapped the cash out button, stood up, and started stepping away while reaching for the cash voucher she was expecting. She didn't get the cash voucher, of course. I saw her decide that she must not have pressed the cash out button correctly, so she pressed it again, firmly. Again, nothing happened. Despite my better judgment, I commented to her that the machine had locked up, but a slot attendant would be along shortly to help with paying taxes and afterwards give her a hand payout. Can you guess what she said to me? Taxes? Just then, the expected slot attendant showed up, and they had a quiet yet earnest conversation, and I went back to minding my own business. We, that is to say, you and I, haven't gotten very far yet in this podcast sequence of episodes, but take my word for it anyway. Remember to tip your slot attendant after winning a jackpot. They really do deserve it. They're the pointy end of the spear, you might say. As mentioned, whether a casino is old or new, a slot attendant will arrive shortly to administer a hand payout. This happens because the machine signaled a need for one to the casino dispatcher, who handles the logistics of moving available slot attendants around within their assigned areas to slot machines and the players at them that are in need. During a hand payout... A slot attendant collects personal identification sufficient to complete a tax form, as well as any other state-required documentation. They perform a cash payout if there is sufficient cash in their belt pouch, and then unlock the slot machine to allow the player to continue. If the attendant is not carrying sufficient cash with them, or if the player wishes to have a cashier's check for some or all of the winnings, the slot attendant leaves the player with a receipt and returns a short while later with the cash and or check. If the attendant leaves for cash or check, they typically unlock the slot machine beforehand to allow the player to continue betting while waiting for them to return. As it happens more than a few times, I've won another taxable jackpot while waiting for them to return. It got a bit confusing having to explain to the next slot attendant that the first slot attendant already had my ID. Another time, I won a taxable jackpot on another slot machine while waiting for the payout of the first slot machine. I hadn't realized that because of the casino surveillance system, I actually had to physically go back to the first slot machine, stand in front of it, in order to receive the hand payout for those winnings. Then go back to the second slot machine to get those winnings there from that hand payout. I have to say, I was a little uncomfortable walking away from the jackpot showing on the second machine, but they said everything would be fine, nobody else could take it, and so everything was fine. In summary, on how do slot machines pay out, the most important thing to remember about winning a jackpot is to make sure you've brought your government-issued identification. If you don't have it, then you cannot receive a taxable jackpot. 
This reminds me of a joke. Not a good joke, but a joke. There is exactly one way to not pay taxes on a taxable jackpot. You want to know how? Don't accept the jackpot. And no, your friend sitting next to you cannot claim your jackpot for you, whether you don't have an ID or otherwise. The eye in the ceiling, the surveillance of the casino, knows it's your winnings and not somebody else's. This is also why you don't want someone else pressing the bet button on a slot machine when it's your money in the slot machine. The taxable jackpot belongs to whomever presses the bet button, not whose money it is in the machine. This has stood up recently in Atlantic City court. The second thing to be aware of is what is or is not a taxable jackpot. It is my understanding that federal taxes on jackpots of $1,200 or more are optional. However, whether there are any state income taxes on jackpots of $1,200 or more entirely depends on the specific state. If there are income taxes, they typically are not optional. The same is true if the casino where the jackpot is won is located within a municipality having local taxes. If a machine locks up, it's either had an error, such as being out of paper or some other kind of internal fault, or you've won a taxable jackpot. Either way, a slot attendant will show up shortly to help. For goodness sake, don't walk away until you know which it is. Much of this segment is about the process of winning large taxable jackpots. Most people have never won one, and I expect that even those that have won a few may have learned something here. I've won only, only, 110 taxable jackpots in my life so far, but I've learned from a few different circumstances which I hope are valuable to most of you. There are slot enthusiasts that win 200 to 300 taxable jackpots per year. I've met them. If any are listening, or if anyone has won under unusual circumstances, please tweet it on my Twitter account at Professor Slots, or comment in the show notes at professorslots.com slash e7. In the next episode, I'll discuss common slots definitions, as well as covering slot machine casino gambling in the great U.S. state of Colorado. Show notes for this episode are available on my website at professorslots.com slash e7, where you'll find subscribe buttons for Apple Podcasts, as well as a nifty link for Android users plus much more. Follow me, John Friedel, on Twitter, at Professor Slots. Again, show notes for this episode can be found on my website at professorslots.com slash e7. So let's talk about California slot machine casino gambling. Somewhat surprisingly, California has the second largest number of casinos of any U.S. state, second only to Nevada. There are currently 170 casinos and paramutual facilities contributing to California slot machine casino gambling. All of these casinos are on Native American reservations, as these reservations are generally found in out-of-the-way locations, so too are the casinos. Consequently, due to the sufficient land being available when it might not otherwise be available off reservations, this has contributed to many of these casinos also having golf courses. At last count, within the last year, there was a total of 81,667 slots and gaming machines, as well as 3,006 table games available at California casinos. Traditional craps and roulette are not allowed, although card-based versions of these games can legally be offered. As blackjack is also illegal, the game is instead played to 22, which is legal to play. The minimum gambling ages varies from 18 to 21, depending upon the specific casino. Specifically, if a casino serves alcohol, the minimum gambling age is 21. If the casino doesn't serve alcohol, it's 18. Indian tribes in California are not required to release their slot machine payback percentages. Further, the state does not legally require any minimum payback percentages. Consequently, in this state, it is impossible to determine via public reporting which casinos have the best odds of winning. Personal ownership of slot machines 25 years old or older is legally allowed in California. Next, let's talk about the State Gaming Commission. Prior to 1984, gambling was unregulated in California. 
1984, the Attorney General was authorized by the Gaming Registration Act to perform uniform minimum regulations of California card rooms. However, the Attorney General had little authority and less funding. In 1997, the state established the California Gambling Control Commission. In 2000, voters passed a state constitutional amendment allowing casino-style gambling on Native American land via tribal state gaming compacts. In 2007, the Attorney General's Gambling Division was redefined as a bureau. As a result of these 30-plus years of developments, California currently has a Bureau of Gambling Control under the state's Department of Justice and has its California Gambling Control Commission. The Bureau ensures the integrity of gambling in California. They ensure that gambling is conducted honestly, competitively, and free from criminal and corruptive elements. The Bureau works with the Commission to regulate the gambling industry. There is limited financial reports available on the Commission's website, and no information available with regards to limits for or past reports on payback percentages. There is a single line item called Tribal Gaming Revenues, providing monthly revenues for the year. The list of all casinos in California is updated by the state's California Gambling Control Commission on their website at www.cgcc.ca.gov. I will add a direct link to their downloadable PDF list of California casinos to the show notes for this episode available at professorslots.com slash e7. So let's talk about some of these gambling establishments. Interactive maps for finding California casinos can be found at both websites for the World Casino Directory and American Casino Guide. I didn't mention that I do not receive any revenue from either of those organizations, neither the World Casino Directory nor the American Casino Guide. I just like their websites. And the American Casino Guide book, annual 500-plus page book with casino coupons. Two casinos, Fire Mountain Casino and Rain Rock Casino, were expected to open in late 2017. Both casinos will have only Class 2 games, that's bingo or something similar. Rain Rock Casino by the Karuk Tribe in Northern California is currently expected to open in early 2018 instead of late 2017. It's being built on the southeast corner of Eureka on a 60-acre site east of Interstate 5, about 20 miles south of the Oregon state line. It's in Shasta Valley, about 2,500 feet above sea level. After more than a decade of delays, completion of Fire Mountain Casino has been delayed again until at least late 2018. It is to be located a few miles south of Marysville, or approximately 30 miles north of Sacramento. Pachanga Resort Casino is California's largest casino, having 3,800 gaming machines and 132 table games, located in Temecula, 90 miles southeast of Los Angeles. San Miguel Indian Bingo and Casino is California's second largest casino, with 3,400 gaming machines and 125 table games. It is located near San Bernardino, 60 miles east of Los Angeles. Los Angeles alone has nine casinos. In summary, California slot machine casino gambling includes the second largest number of casinos of any U.S. state, second only to Nevada. There are currently 170 casinos and paramutuals, all located on relatively remote Native American reservations. The minimum gambling age is 21 if alcohol is served at the casino, otherwise it's 18. Indian tribes in California are not required to release their slot machine payout percentages, Furthermore, the state does not require a minimum payback percentage. Part one of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is Common Slots Definitions. I'll have an introduction, and then I'll talk about two sets of terms. The first will be 18 Common Slots Definitions currently in use, and then I'll talk about five more important historical but obsolete slots definitions. And then I have a summary. Part two of the next episode is Colorado slot machine casino gambling, where once again I'll have an introduction, relevant legal statutes on gambling, slot machine private ownership, 
State Gaming Commission, Gambling Establishments, and a summary. That's the end of another great episode of the Professor Slots podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Show notes for this episode can be found at professorslots.com slash e7. That's professorslots.com slash e7. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you, where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Please subscribe to and review the show. That would help so much. Here's how to subscribe. If you're an Apple user, simply visit professorslots.com slash AP to be directed right to my show on the Apple Podcast website. If you happen to be an Android user, simply visit professorslots.com slash Android. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. <laughs>